we now continue in this lecture uh, with the analysis of the short circuited generator. Uh, in the previous class, we just started upon uh, what happens when uh, you have the synchronous machine running at a constant speed uh, under open circuit conditions and we apply a step voltage at the field winding. Okay. The voltage which we apply at the field winding is such that uh, under open circuited conditions, we will get 1 per unit line to line RMS voltage at the terminals of the stator assuming of course, that the stator is connected uh, as a star uh, is connected in star. Now, uh, we did not actually complete uh, that part of the exercise, I had uh, written a small Scilab program uh, to uh, see the transient behavior of an open circuited generator. So, uh, we continue with our discussion of an open circuited generator, by the end of this lecture we would have come to the short circuited generator and the transient response of a synchronous machine which is short circuited. So, actually what we will be doing is uh, uh, studying two transients, we will assume the machine is rotating at a synchro the synchronous speed, then we give a step change in uh, the field voltage, uh, so that the voltage builds up in a generator, the generator gets excited and then we short circuit the generator and see the transients which uh, arise due to that. Now, in this particular study, uh, we will of course, not be considering uh, the interaction with the mechanical system, we will assume that the machine is running at uh, a constant speed, we will assume it is running at the rated or the base speed. Uh, of course, uh, as we shall see later under short circuit conditions, the non-zero torque is created whenever uh, we apply a short circuit. So, uh, in fact, uh, the speed will be affected in a certain way, but uh, for the time being we do not consider that uh, uh, that interaction with the mechanical system. We will of course, do that later in this course. In fact, uh, a large part of our uh, course uh, will be dedicated to studying electromechanical uh, oscillations, which we shall see later. Uh, if you look at the synchronous machine equations, in fact, just the flux equation, since we are not considering the mechanical equation or the torque equations, the flux equations are in fact linear and uh, these transients in fact can be studied by a simple uh, linear system analysis that is using eigenvalues, eigenvectors and the complete response can be characterized. Uh, and uh, we can plot the response. We do not have to do a numerical integration, because this is a linear system and the response of the system comes out to be in a nice closed form. Okay. So, that was what we discussed in the previous class, we just revise what we did uh, then. We have got the equations of the flux of the machine under constant speed, it turns out that A 1, A 2, B 2 will be constant matrices. E f d is a step of 1 per unit, recall that E f d is proportional to the field voltage. In fact, we apply the field voltage, so that we will have E f d as 1 per unit or in other words in steady state, we will have the line to line voltage of a star connected synchronous uh, generator to be 1 per unit. Okay. So, that, that is the voltage we applied the field. Recall that we have formulated our model in such a way, that we do not really specify the field voltage, but we uh, directly, but we say uh, we give the field voltage in terms of what effect it has on the open circuit voltage in steady state. So, again let me repeat that we apply a field voltage such that E f d is 1 or the open circuited line to line RMS voltage of the synchronous machine is star connected is 1 per unit. Okay. So, we assume of course, that the speed is constant and uh, we order the states in, in this fashion. Uh, I d and I q, in fact, uh, you may wonder what is, where is V d and V q here. V d and V q are the uh, voltages at the terminal of the generator. What we assume of course, is that the terminal voltage of the generator is uh, written in terms of the current I d and I q and since we are considering the open circuited case, we will assume that R l is a very large, we will take R l is very large. So, open circuited generator is represented as a star connected load with the resistance values R l as very large. Okay. Now, uh, 
so in in some sense the effect of vdn this this vdn vq is got subsumed into a2 since we have expressed it in terms of id and iq a1 looks like this we did it in the previous class okay omega is the speed of the machine we'll assume that in this study in the study this speed is constant and equal to omega base or the rated value of the synchronous generator id and iq in fact are uh, related to the fluxes as i shown some time back the fluxes by a matrix of this kind remember that this is this uh, model is a per unit model we are talking in terms of x t dash x q dash but remember that uh, earlier we were talking in terms of l d dash and l d double dash in per unit l d dash l d double dash is equivalent to x d dash and x t double dash okay and so on so just remember that this is a per unit model okay b2 of course is this remember we are using model 2 with the assumption that tdc double dash is equal to td double dash the data for this uh generator uh i'll just show it to you on a slide so the data for this is given uh in this slide we'll be using model 2 of course and td0 dash will of course take us 5 seconds not 8 seconds as given before now what we will do is uh, of course kind of uh, write a program to plot the values of the transient uh, the transients seen in the voltages currents and so on uh, for this particular transient so the transient we are considering is a step change in the field voltage okay we will of course do the short circuit subsequently so right now we will of course do the step change in uh, field voltage recall that once we have got the equations of the machine in this form which is a purely state space form psi dot is equal to a into psi plus b2 into eft remember that i is nothing but a3 into psi so finally we get this psi dot is equal to a psi plus b2 this is a typical input output uh, rather a state space form of uh, the machine equations and uh, we saw in the previous class that you could get the analytical expression for the response in this fashion and uh, that really boils down to evaluating this this expression here so we don't do a numerical integration because it's not necessary we have got a closed form expression we'll plug in the values of time in order to obtain the final response okay in this particular expression p is in fact the eigen vector right eigen vector matrix which you have talked in the first uh, you know uh, the first 10 lectures of this course we have discussed analysis method for dynamical systems where i defined the right eigen vector okay and uh, this matrix here is a diagonal matrix okay in fact um, there are in a's of 6 by 6 matrix so actually in this case you will have six eigen values not three as shown here okay and this is defined in this fashion so this is where we were last time uh, what we will do now is of course show, i'll show you the program corresponding to uh, this particular um, transient so i have programmed this of course using scilab Uh, and uh, we had seen uh, the program in the previous class we'll just have a look at it fast again and then run it okay so let's go to that program so we are at the scilab workspace at the present time i'll show you the program it's called step.sci we had seen it last time we'll just run through it again quickly so i have entered the data it's it's quite intuitive and easy to follow i'll just uh, rerun it again uh, re uh, re read through it uh of course we have given the standard parameters here we have been given the some re uh, the reactances as well as the time constants we have been given what are known as the open circuit time constants why these are called open circuit time constants will become apparent soon 
Uh, of course, uh, the way we have formulated our equations, uh, we we have formulated them in terms of the time constant T d dash, T d double dash, etcetera. But remember, you can get T d dash and T d double dash using these two equations. Okay. In fact, you get a quadratic which we have to solve in order to get T d dash and T d double dash, and similarly T q dash and T q double dash. So that is what is shown on the screen at present. From the parameters, we are in fact obtaining T d dash and T d double dash. Similarly, T q dash and T q double dash. We have of course taken the states in this fashion, and uh, we have take, we take R L to be a very large value in order to mimic open circuit conditions. And this is the A matrix. This is the A two matrix. This is the B two matrix. This is the A three matrix. This is the final state space matrix is A. The command V D is equal to spec of A is in fact. Uh, will obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. The final steady state value of the states can be obtained by setting psi dot is equal to 0, in which case of course, the steady state value of the fluxes are given by A, A inverse B 2, which is implemented in this program here. I will just see if I can move this slightly. So, now we evaluate the time response of the states. So, actually it is a direct evaluation, it is not a numerical integration because it is not necessary to numerically integrate to obtain the answers. We will assume the initial conditions before we apply the step are 0 and we actually evaluate the expression which I had just given some time back. Finally, of course, I can get once I get the fluxes which are x give, uh, denoted by x here. I can obtain the currents and the voltages and the torques and so on. Okay. So, in fact, uh, we will plot the values of torque and uh, the voltages etcetera shortly. So, I will minimize this and now I will actually run the program. So, what I will do is uh, run the program from the Scilab workspace. And so, in fact, we are simulating it for uh, more than 30 uh, around 30 seconds. Um, we shall see why we need to uh, simulate this for 30 seconds. So, it is taking a bit of time because I have uh, evaluating it at, uh, at a uh, relatively short time interval. Uh, I mean, the if you look at the time I am evaluating this for. So, I just go down, scroll down the program and uh, I am evaluating it every 5 milliseconds for 30 seconds. Okay. So, uh, because of the, that the program did take some, uh, it did take a while for it to simulate it. In fact, not simulate it, evaluate it at various time instants. Now, uh, the thing is before I go on and show you how the time response looks like, uh, what we uh, first will see are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. In fact, if you we'll try to evaluate the eigenvalues, they are getting we are getting two large numbers. These large numbers are not, are indicative of something happening very fast. Okay. In fact, uh, these arise because we have chosen R L to be a very large number. So, in fact, R L being a very large number results in a very large negative eigenvalues. So, this transient in fact dies down very soon. Okay. It is like having a large uh, uh, an R L circuit with a large R L. So, that is why you get these two large eigenvalues. The rest of the eigenvalues on the other hand are not very large. They are in fact uh, quite small and uh, one interesting thing is that if you look at 1 upon T d 0 dash, okay, it comes out to be 0.2. So, in fact, one of the eigenvalues is 0.2. Okay. 
Similarly, 1 by T D 0 double dash is 33.33 and you find that the Eigen value also is minus 33.33. Okay. Similarly, T Q dash in T Q 0 double dash. Okay. So, and T Q 0 dash and T Q 0 double dash. Okay. So, if you look at the Eigen values, in fact, they are very, very, very close or practically equal to the open circuit the reciprocal of the open circuit time constant. So, uh, let me put this in perspective. When you have a synchronous machine which is under open circuit conditions, the Eigen values are in fact the reciprocals of the open circuit time constant. In fact, that is why they are called the open circuit time constants. In fact, I had waited for a very long time uh, to actually explain this uh, particular point about why they are called open circuit time constants. I hope it is clear now. In fact, the Eigen values which you get, you can even prove this analytically, we have done it numerically, but uh, the Eigen values are in fact the reciprocals of the open, uh, the open circuit time constants, which also means that uh, the kind of responses we are going to get are going to be of the kind T upon, I will just write this again in case it was not very clear, you, you can expect in the response to have of course, provided that these eigenvalues or modes are observable in the output, you are likely to have uh, responses especially in the voltage to contain this and this. In fact, uh, you, you can also expect, but actually these are not observable in uh, the voltage uh, these two these two modes okay these two are in fact uh, so that is what we can expect okay this is something you can actually prove i'll not prove it here but you can prove that these two time constant will be visible in the voltage response so if i actually plot plot time versus V D. Okay. So, I will just interpret this for you in case it is not very clearly visible on your screen. This is 6 e raise to minus 4. So, the 6 into 10 raise to minus 4. So, actually it is 0. In fact, V D is uh, if you have under in fact, it is showing it to be not exactly 0 because R L we have taken to be a large number which is not infinity. So, it is not a perfectly open circuited condition. But this is a VD is extremely zero, uh, extremely small. I'm sorry, and uh, it's practically zero. Okay, so VD is under open circuit conditions is practically zero, even under transient situations. Okay, in fact, we have proved this uh, about uh, two or three lectures back, where we had considered the open circuited steady state behavior of the machine. The steady state behavior of the machine is, in fact. Uh, something we did some time back and we did prove that V d is equal to 0 and V q in fact will be equal to E f d, which is the open circuit line to line RMS voltage in steady state. So, the open circuited, so since we have in fact set v E f d or we have given the field voltage, so that we will get E f d is equal to 1, we should expect that V q will settle down to 1. Okay. So, let us just see that, yes it does. Okay. So, it settles down to the value 1 starts from 0, settles down to the value 1 and uh, if you look at this time scale, it is 30 seconds. So, in 30 seconds, uh, it takes about 30 seconds to settle down. In fact, uh, if you see the settling time, it is approximately 30 seconds. The time constant recall of uh, the open circuit time constant of a machine can be very large. In fact, here I have taken it 5 seconds. In fact, uh, you can have uh, open circuit time constants of the order of 10 seconds as well. Okay. In, in which case the settling time would be approximately 50 or 60 seconds. Okay. So, I have taken a time constant of 5. So, 5 fives are 25. So, approximately 5 times the time constant is the settling time. Okay. So, this e raise to minus t by t d 0 dash is very clearly visible as a slowly increasing uh, you know exponentially rising uh, response in v q. Okay. Of course, from V d and V q, assuming that theta is equal to omega t uh, omega 0 t, we can obtain V a as well. So, if I plot V a, 
this is how it looks. Of course, it is a sinusoid, okay. it's, it reaches sinusoidal steady state. Okay. So, it also has a the envelope rises in the same way as V q, but this is sinusoidal. In fact, if I try to zoom this, let us see if I can. Yeah, This is in fact a 50 hertz sinusoid, okay, since speed is constant. Yeah. So, this is a sinusoidal value. I will just uh, unzoom this. Okay. Of course, uh, you notice that this is tending towards point approximately 0 0.8 and not 1. That is not surprising because we have uh, we assume that this is a uh, star connected winding and uh, the line to line voltage RMS voltage is 1 per unit. In fact, we have chosen our V f to be such a value so that the line to line RMS voltage is 1 per unit. So, one can expect that the phase to new uh, the voltage across each winding which is also the phase to neutral voltage will be square root of 2 by 3 into 1 uh, into 1 which is 0 0.81 that is why this you see the peak value of this is going towards 0 0.8. So, you see this going towards 0 0.8. So, this is basically the open circuit response of a generator of course, the point is that uh, somebody may ask well I am not seeing the other time constant e raise to minus t by t d 0 double dash in this. Actually, t d 0 double dash t 0 dash is 5 and t 0 t d 0 double dash is in fact 0 0.03. So, in fact, the reciprocal of 0 0.03 which is also an eigenvalue as mentioned sometime is much 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 faster than 1 upon 5. Okay. So, that basically uh, the other mode so to speak is not visible very clearly though it does exist. Okay. Uh, the reason of course, being that it dies down much faster than the transient associated with T d 0 dash which is uh, the open circuit time constant. Okay. Now, uh, T q 0 dash and T q 0 double dash related um, you know modes are not observable in the response. So, this is something I request you to uh, prove that you know for this transient in which I take 0 initial conditions remember I am taking 0 initial conditions. If you take 0 initial conditions you will not see uh, the, these two terms uh, you know uh, T uh, this related to T q 0 dash and T q 0 double dash appearing in the response. Okay. So, you do not see this for step response, you do not observe this for the step response, but you do see these two, this is not clearly visible because it is very fast, it dies on very fast. I can call this the dominant mode. Okay. So, uh, we move on now from this point to the short circuit analysis of a machine. So, what we need to do here now is consider that the machine is rotating at a constant speed as we have been doing so far. Then what we do is uh, give a step change in V f, so that you uh, you know build up voltage. Okay. Once you build up the voltage and it reaches steady state, now give it give a short circuit to the generator. So, what we will do is set R l equal to 0. Okay. So, once the machine reaches its steady state, we will assume that R l sudden we will we'll take R l equal to 0 suddenly. Okay. Changing R l of course, changes uh, the value of the state matrix A that is because A 2 changes. Okay. If A 2 changes, then A also will change. Okay. So, you will find that the state matrix changes and the eigenvalues also change. So, the the modes of the system, the nature of the modes of the system are different under short circuit conditions as compared to the open circuit conditions. As you may guess, uh, uh, well there is nothing to guess really. Once you have a short circuit, uh, there will be a current uh, and there will be uh, the voltage of course, will be 0 at the terminals. Okay? So, that is what you will expect to happen. Now, what we will do is uh, of course, we will not simulate the complete open circuit conditions. In fact, we will not re, re evaluate the system under open circuit conditions. What we will assume is that we have given this step 
and the system is now in a steady state corresponding to open circuit conditions. Then after about 5 seconds we will give the short circuit. Okay. So, we will not build up the voltage again, we will assume that it is already built up and the system is in steady state under open circuit conditions running at a constant speed and having EFD as 1 per unit that is the line to line RMS voltage is 1 per unit. Okay. So, what we need to do is uh, the system we assume just a moment we will just scroll back. This is, an, this is another program, this is not the same program as I showed you some time back. Uh, the initial part of the program is the same. We assume that under uh, open circuit, circuit conditions R L is a large value. What we do initially is um, obtain the steady state value of the states for E F T is equal to 1. So, what we will do is assume that the machine is up in steady state, then evaluate the response assuming that the initial conditions are equal to the steady state values. Okay. If we do that of course, if you are in steady state remember that uh, the rates of change of the rates of change of the states are 0. So, we if we are in if we plug in the initial conditions corresponding to the steady state into our expression for the time response, we are just going to remain steady. Okay. So, after some time of course, this is for around 5 seconds we remain steady at the open circuit conditions. After that we apply a short circuit. Remember when we apply a short circuit R L becomes equal to 0. So, that is what is given here. Wonder if it is seen there okay r l is equal to 0 and then we of course reevaluate a2 and the state matrix okay we reevaluate the state matrix a and of course from 5 seconds onwards we use the new a matrix so e raised to what we do is really e raised to the a new from t is equal to 5 seconds onwards. Okay. So, if you look at the analytical expression suppose uh, you have got the initial condition uh, rather if you want to express x in x dot is equal to a x plus b u. I will just write this again slightly in a large and you have got the value of x at 5 seconds is given. In that case, x of t after 5 seconds is actually can be written as e raised to a into t minus 5 into x of 5. Okay. Plus, yeah, 5 to t e raised to a t minus tau b into u into d tau okay u of tau into d tau so this is basically if you know the initial conditions at 5 seconds and you want to evaluate what happens uh, after uh, at time is equal to 5 seconds onwards okay so what we will do now is uh, actually evaluate the short circuit uh, the short circuit conditions So, uh, in fact, if you take out the eigenvalues of A under short circuited conditions, the eigenvalues turn out to be like this. In fact, if you look at the eigenvalues, there is a term here which is uh, minus 3 plus or minus 313.95. This is, of course, reminiscent of um, omega, in fact, in radians per second. So, if you look at the imaginary part, well it is reminiscent of that. We will discuss this a bit, this issue uh, in fact, this point a bit further later. 
the other time cons the other eigenvalues are minus 2, minus 34.1, minus 43.1 and minus 1.2. In fact, if you look at uh, the time constants, in fact, 1 by T d dash 1.2085, in fact, the reciprocal of the T d dash is in fact, one of the eigenvalues of this system. Okay? 1 by T d double dash is also an eigenvalue. Okay? So, the four in fact, the last four eigenvalues are the reciprocals of the time constants T d dash, T d double dash, T q dash and T q double dash. Okay? In fact, you will, will expect in the response to see terms like e raise to minus T d dash and e raise to minus T d double dash and in fact, that is why these terms are called the short circuit time constants of the system. Okay? So, that is the reason why uh, the time constants are called the short circuit time constants. So, if I actually plot V A or uh, so if I plot V A initially of course, the system is under steady state and under open circuit conditions at time t is equal to 5 you find that this becomes 0. Okay. So, you find that uh, at time t is equal to 5 seconds the voltage V d uh, sorry V a for phase a becomes 0. Okay. In fact, it becomes 0 for phase b and c also which I am not showing right now. If you look at V q, V q also becomes I am sorry we will have to close this figure first and I will plot it again. So, actually it is not clear, seen very clearly, it goes from 1 to 0 at 5 seconds. Okay. So, since there is a short circuit this happens, V q in fact, uh, so if you look at uh, V q it becomes 0 from 1 at 5 seconds. Okay. So, in fact, if you plot I a on the other hand, for example, uh, first what we will do is plot the current I d. If you look at plot, plot of current I d, this is how I d looks like. So, it is of course, 0 in initially because you are under open circuit conditions and then there is a big jump. It in fact, the current becomes a very large negative value and then slowly it settles down to a value here which is approximately steady state value is in fact approximately 0 0.55 okay whereas yeah so this is the response under short circuit conditions okay so what you notice of course is the response consists of several modes in fact some uh, the modes of course are not clearly seen all of the modes are not very clearly seen but one of the dramatic things you see is that there is an oscillation okay this is not surprising because one of our eigen values is a complex eigen value with a imaginary part equal to omega in fact 313 you recall that eigen value yeah so this is what is it is manifest here you also see that there seems to be some kind of a exponential decay. So, you know you, you find uh, an oscillation which decays. So, if you just look at me here, you will find that once there is a step, there is a step, there is a oscillatory value which decays, but also there is a kind of a there is another exponential you know decay here. So, there is a decay of this kind and there is a decay of an oscillation as well. So, actually this is not very surprising because we are really seeing uh, several modes, it is a response is a superposition of several modes and uh, the key modes of course, in this case are 1 by T d double dash and 1 by T d dash and of course, the oscillatory eigenvalue which we have seen some time back. So, there is an oscillatory mode. We will just um, re get the eigenvalues again. So, you can expect to see these things. Okay. I am sorry. 
so you are getting going to get a complex pair of modes of course the whole system is stable because it has got eigenvalues with re negative real parts okay so uh, in fact if you plot i a which is the phase current okay phase current you will find that We will just redraw this, we will redraw this I A, yeah. So, what you see in I A is in fact this is the phase current, remember. In the phase current, you see that although in steady state, if you look at it, things in steady state, it is absolutely symmetric, the waveform is symmetric, it is a symmetric sinusoid as one would expect. in transient during transients you see a dc offset as well as the envelope of this ia is large okay so what you have uh, as the response of ia if you look at me you'll find that the envelope of ia decays with time okay the envelope of ia decays with time but also the envelope itself has got a DC offset. So, you see a DC offset like this and you see an envelope which is also dying with time. Okay. So, you have a huge envelope in the beginning that envelope itself decays and also the envelope is offset and it is coming down like that. Okay. So, that is the typical response of the phase currents uh, in case you suddenly short, short circuit a generator. Okay. So, this is what is a typical response of a short circuited synchronous machine. <clears throat> now, uh, one of the things uh, which we need to, uh, which we can of course, see here is that we have done this before, uh, the steady state value of I d is nothing but minus of E f d in steady state divided by x d. You know this is what one can easily prove uh, for a short circuited generator. In steady state, this I leave this as an exercise okay, and I q in steady state is going to be equal to 0. This is something which you can prove very easily. So, let us just verify that this is true. So, we will just check out that I d if you look at the value of I d, although there is an initial transit, oh, we will have to, we will just close this and redo it. Yeah. So, the steady state value of I d is approximately minus phi 5, 5 and if you actually look at E f d is in fact 1. So, 1 divided by x d is also 0.55. So, what we are seeing is that uh, this of course, the transient finally uh, becomes the steady state and in steady state x i d is minus e f d by x d dash uh, x d I am sorry it should be x d. Okay. If you look at i q the steady state value is 0 does not mean of course, that the transients values are 0 and you see this here. You see that there is some transient and this becomes finally 0 in steady state. Now, we move on to trying to understand uh, some other aspects of a short circuited generator. In fact, if you look at uh, the initial value just after the transient has begun that is uh, you know just at the time of short circuit the currents are very large okay if you look at id or uh, iq is of course zero but I, id in fact is quite large you look at this the steady state value is only 0.55 okay but if you look at the initial transient you see the peak value goes right up to minus 8. Okay. So, the initially the current is extremely large. Okay. So, this is in fact called a subtransient period this initial few cycles of the fault just after the 
short circuit has occurred is called a sub transient period of the machine. In fact, if you look at you see that the peak value becomes as low as 0 0.8 and the mean value is approximately if you look at this figure this the mean value you can say since this is an oscillation I will talk in terms of a mean value the mean value is approximately minus 3. In fact, if uh, it is approximately like this. So, if you take out the mean value something like this. So, if you look at uh, if you look at the curve of I d you will find that it is initially 0 and then it becomes and then there is an oscillation the envelope of the oscillation dies down there is a transient and then it settles down to the steady state value okay, which is E f d x d. In fact, the mean value of this initial transient let us call it this is roughly E f d by x d double dash. So, let us just verify that uh, what we are seeing from this figure here is approximately 3.5 minus 3.5 okay this is approximately minus 3.5 so you actually let's see what 1 divided by xt double dash is in fact this is minus uh, it's 4.3 this is of course because i can't uh, make out the mean value very easily from this figure but what you notice is that in the initial period the the current has got an oscillatory component and the mean value is approximately 3 to 4 okay minus 3 to 4 id value is minus 3 to 4 this is because of uh, the, this in fact is the initial behavior just after a short circuit in fact uh, just after a short circuit uh, one can say that the machine currents are determined roughly by the sub transient reactance of the machine in fact xd double dash is called the sub transient reactance of the machine okay so the sub transient period the machine experiences a much larger current compared to what it sees in steady state. In steady state in fact, the current is 0.55 it is even lower than 1 per unit the rated current of the machine, okay. but under sub transient conditions it can be quite high. Okay. Now, one of the things you will notice in the eigenvalues corresponding to this uh, we will just uh, see the eigenvalues again you find that there is a clear separation of eigenvalues if you look look at the eigenvalues the first two have a very large magnitude in fact the large mag they have a large magnitude and uh, this uh, omega uh, the imaginary part is in fact equal to omega the rated speed of the machine it's in fact roughly 340 so that's the radian frequency corresponding to 50 hertz now it's not surprising in fact, that the magnitude of it is quite large compared to the other eigenvalues, the magnitude of the first two eigenvalues, the complex pair. So, in fact, can we uh, you know uh, do a fast and slow state decomposition of this particular system? It is an interesting uh, possibility, right. So, if you look at the state matrix A 1, in fact, you have got omega minus omega and omega here. So, you can guess I mean it is just a guess that the eigenvalues corresponding to the first two the first two eigenvalues in fact, which have got an imaginary component omega are probably associated very much with the first two variables that is psi d and psi q. In fact, you can formalize this by looking at the participation factors corresponding to the states. We, we discussed this in the first uh, uh, in uh, around the eighth or ninth lecture of this course. Okay, so you can actually look at the participation factors corresponding to uh, this uh, these eigenvalues. Uh, see the participation of various states, but we can guess. We'll not get into the uh, complete. Uh, you know study of the participation factors, but you can guess that psi d and psi q are primarily associated with this eigenvalues corresponding to uh, the complex pair of eigenvalues the first two ones okay? and that is because just a bit of guesswork if you look at the state matrix it has got in fact 
for the first two states this omega minus omega and omega in the off diagonal elements okay, of the first two states. Okay. So, that is just the guess, but it is an interesting exercise to actually prove this formally using participation factors and I encourage you to really do it. Okay. So, actually uh, an interesting possibility is of course, to do a simplified analysis and uh, assume that these two states you know you set to 0 you know you, you have got in fact we will call these the fast states because they are associated with we guess that they are associated with the eigenvalues of large magnitude and these in fact are the slower states. Okay. In that case, we can do a fast and slow decomposition as I had mentioned uh, in the first 10 lectures when we are uh, studying the dynamic analysis of the uh, analysis of dynamical systems, we had discussed this issue of uh, fast and slow states. And one of the things I told you that if you have got a system consisting of fast and slow states x fast and x slow. then one can actually get the response of the slow states without much er error if one assumes that you, you can set this equal to 0, you set this equal to 0. So, you can in fact express x f in terms of x s and finally, x s dot will be a s s minus a s f a f f inverse a f s. So, you can in fact study this system as a lower order system of the slow states. In fact, you can we do this in this case? Yes, you can. In fact, I uh, will just run through the code in which I show you that this uh, I just programmed it. We will uh, try to understand it a bit more in detail in the next lecture. I uh, will show you the code for it. I have uh, basically I am doing the simulation of a reduced order system in which I have treated psi d and psi q as fast variables and uh, basically converted the differential equation corresponding to these fast equations into algebraic equations and then studied a lower order system. Okay. So, I will just look at the code which does this. The same code, what I have done is, oops. We will scroll down. It is the same code except under short circuited conditions. What I do is I form a reduced A matrix by neglecting the fast transients. Okay. So, this is something I do. So, I call this A old as uh, I just store the old A matrix in A old and uh, I form the reduced A matrix, this is just a 4 by 4 matrix in the slow variables, which are the variables from states 3 to state 6, that is from psi h, psi f, psi g and psi k. And I do the simulation of this system. Okay. So, I will just slowly go through this code and I will run it once and we will discuss it again in the next class. So, what I am doing is using a re reduced order system okay, to do the simulation. Uh, I would not call it a simulation, the evaluation. Okay. So, for example, I can execute this program. This is a sh modified short circuit program with a reduced order state space by eliminating the state equations corresponding to the psi d and psi q. So, let's wait for a while. The eigenvalues of the reduced model are these. In fact, they are not very much different from what we had got earlier from the larger model. So, our fast and slow decomposition uh, and simplification 
does not cause a very large uh, loss of accuracy as far as the slow states are concerned. And of course, if you plot for example, time versus I d, what you notice is we will of course, have to this is the old figure, I will just redo it again. We get a response which is shown of the oscillatory transient which we had seen earlier. So, we actually get the same response as before, but you, you initially recall that there was an oscillation of frequency omega b, now you do not see it. Okay. We shall use this model uh, in the next lecture, we will just start off the next lecture with this uh, model, uh, with this reduced order model, we will relook at what results we have got. And, uh, Thereafter, we will consider a few more cases of a synchronous machine. Okay. So, with this uh, we stop today's lecture, we have really uh, this is in fact the first uh, real uh, power system analysis, dynamic analysis analysis we have done in this course using the model which we have developed. So, uh, we will of course, continue on this uh, on this theme in the next class with the reduced order model. Uh, thereafter, we will also in this course go and model a few more elements before we can actually talk in terms of doing an analysis of an integrated system. And mind you, um, the integrated system though it will be much much more complicated, it is amenable to a you know sustained and scientific attack as we have done for the short circuited synchronous generator.